Coming up today on That LTD Life, we're gonna be checking out Topic Mojo. Everybody knows that content creation is important, but when you sit down to actually make an article or record a video, are you uncertain what to actually create content about? Well, that is what Topic Mojo hopes to solve. You'll never run out of topics with Topic Mojo, at least that is the philosophy. Let's go ahead and try this tool out together and then you can decide whether or not this is a good fit for your business. My name is Dave, by the way, I'm from clientamp.com. I review new lifetime deals every single day of the week. This video is not sponsored. I'm gonna be giving you my honest opinion as I go through the tool, whether I like it or don't, you will hear about it. If you wanna support this content, I've got a link for AppSumo in the description. If you click that before making a purchase, it helps keep the lights on around here. Now I should note that AppSumo is still running their Black Friday sale for just a little bit longer. So if you wanna save 10% on absolutely everything and it's before December 3rd or December 6th, if you're a Plus member, definitely click my link in the description to go get a great deal over at AppSumo. Of course, I covered AppSumo's Black Friday extravaganza in depth, so I'll have links to all of my content down below related to Black Friday if you're looking for some advice on what to grab. Okay, so this is the sales page for Topic Mojo. You can see it starts at 59 bucks. If we look at the plan details, you'll notice there are multiple plans available, but they're all basically the same. It just scales based on usage. However, once you get to tier five, you can actually get a custom domain for Topic Mojo, which might be useful if you're using this tool for clients. You can see we get one workspace on tier one, two workspaces on tier two, and five workspaces on tier five. So you can equate that each single code is going to increase the number of workspaces by one, and you probably want to assign a workspace to a client. So got 10 people you wanna work with, boom, you're ready to go with a 10 code stack. And if you're wondering, yeah, you can stack unlimited codes. The AppSumo picker only goes to 10, but you could literally buy as many as you want. Okay, so here is the interface for Topic Mojo. I'm gonna show you how everything works. It's actually a little confusing initially because there's so many different items on the sidebar here and there's not a very good explanation for what each one of them does. But let's start with the Topic Model. The Topic Model is basically kind of like Google Trends where you can find out what people are actually thinking about a specific subject. So here's an example. I entered in tacos and if I click on View Report, takes a minute to load up and that is a reoccurring theme with this tool. It is not super snappy even after you've already done the search. Like I could understand if it's gathering the data, that takes a little bit of time, but after it's already been generated, it still probably takes a good 15, 20 seconds to get into every page. So just come to the application with a little bit of patience and you will be rewarded. It's actually a pretty decent app. So this is my topic model for the keyword tacos. And as I was saying, it's kind of like Google Trends, but a little bit better than that. So we start with a you know short tail keyword or a very general keyword, something like tacos, dog walking, whatever it is that you need to research. And then Topic Mojo is going to give us some longer tail or seed keywords. So the first thing we see is like the trends, like, oh, this was a very popular topic back in May of last year. And, you know, I guess Cinco de Mayo, it was a little bit after that, people are talking about tacos. Then it dipped off, not so much, and then kind of rose again here heading into the summer. So we can just see the overall popularity of a keyword. You can also see some general search volume, but I will note that most of the actual SEO data here is obscured. They want to sell you a monthly SEO add-on, which I don't hate actually, it's actually fairly reasonably priced. We'll, actually, we'll see more of this page in a second, but I'll just mention the SEO data is $15 a month and that's a pretty good deal when it comes to SEO. Okay, so back into the topic model, if we scroll down a little bit here, we're basically gonna get a list of keywords that have been modified with our original keyword. So for some reason, the entire first page here is Tacos Plus, which is a restaurant. Uh, and then they're just adding in extra keywords. I've never been to this restaurant, but it must be amazing because they are apparently crushing it in terms of queries. But there are 178 pages here, so no shortage. I can continue scrolling through and there's actually a search up here. So if I wanted to, you know, let's say uh, search for beef, I can see all of the taco related queries related to beef. Now you might notice it says via right here and that has to do with how the search results are grouped together. It's a little bit more difficult to see on this view, but the good news is there's actually four different views up here at the top. So we're in this kind of document mode here, but if I go over to the next one, it shows it to me in more clear groups. So we've got doc tacos plus, tacos with, tacos that. So you can kind of scroll through here and say, well, I wanna make uh, content about uh, tacos on, you know, I'm looking for 
for recipes, things like that. And I can see what keywords people are actually using. Or I could see if you're even doing like t-shirts and you want to find good slogans for the t-shirt. Taco is life. You know, you could find things that people are actually using. That's kind of the main thing with this tool is you're looking for phrases that humans are actually using so that when you go to create content, you're using the language that they already speak. Okay, so let's just take a tour of the different views here. So other than this grouping view, we also have this tree view where we can actually see a little image of the original seed word and then all of the other groupings and then the results off of that. So this is kind of nice. You can see which ones are more popular and maybe which kind of connecting words you want to utilize most. And our fourth option over here is to segment all of the content based on its source. So if we just want to see the SERPs, we can do that. If we just want to see videos, we can do that. Tweets, I've never actually gotten it to show me any content that comes from Twitter. So I don't know if there's an API issue there and maybe it's still just lingering around inside of the application. But just know that uh, I haven't got a lot of good Twitter info. So if this tool is something you want to buy for Twitter usage, you might want to think again. Now let's head back to this original section over here. I wanted to show you the results. We've been viewing them in totality, but you can also segment them just on questions. So if you're looking to write a how-to type of article, you can find out what people are actually curious about. Phrases, shopping-related queries, uh, search-related queries, comparisons, and local results. Now, the local results, I think, are going to be less helpful because it's you know not going to be local to you. It'll just be local in general. I suppose you could type your city in here. So I'll type Minneapolis and I get no results. All right, that is the topic model. We get 500 queries per month per code that you purchase. So I think it's a pretty good deal here. 500 feels like a lot to me. Next up is the social model. And this is exactly what it sounds like. You search for something and then you can see how it's actually being used on social media. Now you can see here, I've done quite a few searches. Well, three because I was trying to get some results on Twitter. I figured if anything's gonna show up on Twitter, it would be Elon. Well, let's go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna open up my Elon search. We'll wait for the spinning wheel. And there we go, we finally got our results. So right now we're looking at the YouTube results and apparently it couldn't find any information about Elon on YouTube, which is pretty hard to believe. Twitter, the same thing. Now I have had other results show up on YouTube, so I don't think YouTube is completely broken but Twitter doesn't seem to work at all. And unfortunately, these are the first two results, so it kind of makes you feel like the tool is not very high quality. However, once we get to Instagram, Pinterest, Reddit, TikTok, all of these are actually displaying some results. Now, you don't get a very good preview, like it doesn't show you, say, a thumbnail here for the TikTok videos. If I wanted to view it, I can open it up here inside of TikTok and it just takes me over but it would be a lot nicer if I could actually see it right here inside of the application, maybe even play the video right here. I mean, that might not work for all content, but maybe things like, uh, I don't know, the YouTube videos I saw, those wouldn't play here either. Like for example, I'm gonna load up this taco query for social model, and you're gonna see that it actually does find 48 videos, but once again, there's no real, I mean, there's not even a title here. I can't even see what the content is gonna be unless I click the watch button. And then it does show me the content in a modal pop-up, but the video is very small and it's still hard to see the title of the video. Now, one thing that I did notice is that this is very recent. So I'm recording this on December 1st and this video here is from December 1st. So it's not like we're getting very old stale data. It's gathering up recent occurrences. But unfortunately, the filters up here don't work at all for me. So let's say I wanted to sort this by views. Well, I could choose highest views. Now, keep your eye on this URL right here. It should change, right? It doesn't. Let's go to lowest views. Uh, nothing there. There's no submit button. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. The only thing I can get to work, these filter by views, same results. So let's say I put in, I don't know, a minimum of 100 or a maximum of 1,000. you think that would filter out the results, but nothing changes here. Um, in fact, I can tell you that this video has 400 results. So let's go ahead and watch it. So here we go, 400 views. And let's just filter out anything below, I don't know, how about 450? And it doesn't change, it's still there. So the filters are clearly not working. The only thing that I can get to work is if I click clear filters, and then I change the sort order to oldest or newest. Well, that's not working right now either, but it was earlier. There we go, I cleared out the filter by views, which was not doing anything, but now I can sort between oldest, oh, no, that's not working either. I filter it now, we're back. You get the point, they're just not reliable. There, that's changing, but it doesn't change back. 
And by the way, this oldest content is from today as well. So either they just don't go back in time or it's just broken. Now, let's say I was looking at LinkedIn posts and I actually wanted to export these. There is the option to export them as a CSV. So I'll get the title, I'll get the preview and I'll get the URL. So here is an example of what that CSV might look like. Actually, it doesn't include the preview, but it does show me the title and the link. And the last main tool, at least in my opinion of Topic Mojo, is the questions section. Now, this is where you can enter in a topic and then you'll see related questions show up, kind of like answer the public. So let's go ahead and see my query here for tacos. We'll open this up. And here we go. We get a list of questions and we can sort these based on where they came from. So we've got Google, Reddit, as well as Quora. Now, once again, all of the SEO data is obscured, which is kind of frustrating. I almost wish they just wouldn't show it and then let me know there's a paid add on. Hey, you can add in SEO like that would be cooler if this just wasn't here. And there's just a little box that said, hey, buy the SEO add on. I think it would be more intriguing. But to see the little padlock 10,000 times, well, that's just kind of frustrating. OK, so on any of these three tools, the topic model, the social model or the questions model, there is the option to generate AI content. Now, we only get eight AI credits with our AppSumo plan, so I have not used one yet. I thought I would do one here on video. We can see what the quality is like. So I'm going to go under questions and tacos. And I like this subject here. Are tacos healthy or unhealthy? So I will check it. Maybe there's a checkbox. OK, so you can't check it, but I'll hit this generate AI content button anyways. And it says check questions to go forward with the report. I'm clicking, but it's not working. All right, let's try another tool because we do get their outline tool included with our deal. The social listener, by the way, is a new tool from them. I believe it is not included in the AppSumo lifetime deal. Uh, it, it's kind of weirdly phrased. It says, find the keywords that have never been searched before on Google. I, why do I want keywords that no one's using? Like fresh keywords, that's one thing, but they should have some volume. If no one's searching for them, they're useless. But maybe it's just a, a language thing. I'm not sure. But the way it's described here, I don't get the I can't use the tool, so it doesn't matter. Let's go over to the outline section and we're going to try this out. So in the outline section, we can actually enter in a, a, a search term here. So I did healthy tacos. And then what it's going to do is show me the top ranking articles and their outline. Now, notice it starts on number two. I don't know why it didn't do number one. There's also no number five. So perhaps those were not articles. They could have been. Um, you know, just like a restaurant or something that sold healthy tacos. That'd be my guess, but it doesn't really fill me in on that. So what I can do here is I can select different, uh, you know, H topics. So these would be like the headlines in the article and I'll choose the ones that I want. It's like I max out at about five. Yep. It says you can only select five headings and then we're going to generate AI content. So I'll click here. I can choose my language. By the way, I've not mentioned, but all of the queries can be specified in multiple languages. I've just been using English, but there are a lot of Eng a lot of different languages available. We'll check on that just to make sure that they're available for all of the queries, but at least you can generate content in multiple languages. I'm going to go ahead and click generate AI content and let's see how this goes. So that was pretty quick. That was faster than any of the reports load. Uh, so that looks pretty good. Now I can see it's written in Markdown here, so it's not actually formatting that for me to view it on the page, which is a little bit of a disappointment. And oh, it's really, really short content too. This definitely does not hold up to the content you'll get on something like Cloud Pro or any of the recent AI you know, tools that I reviewed on this channel, like Merlin or uh, Straco or any of those. We'd be much better off writing content than this. OK, so just double checking the language issue back on the topic model. I can see that there are all of those languages available for your searches as well. So if you speak a second language other than English, you can definitely utilize this tool for that language. Most likely anyways, obviously it's not every global language, but the major ones. Now I just want to try to generate some more AI content in the topic model section over here. So I'm just going to click generate content and then hit generate content. It doesn't give me any way to specify what the content will be about other than I'm in my tacos report here. So um, let's see what happens. Looks like it tried to pop up in a window that Chrome blocked. OK, so here we go. Here's my AI content. I got a 441 word article about tacos. The ultimate guide to tacos from traditional favorites to modern twists. So yeah, not, not very impressive here. Now there are a few other tools here. We've got the humanizer where I could take my AI content. Uh, so let me go back in here, another loading screen. 
Uh, so let's go, go grab our healthy tacos article and we'll copy it, go back over to the humanize section, paste it in, and then I'll hit humanize. And now it's going to rewrite it and supposed to be more human, uh, but it's just kind of condensed it all down into a single paragraph. I mean, did it make it more human? Probably. Uh, the original was unleash your inner chef. I mean, how AI is that? And learn how to cook healthy tacos right in your own kitchen. Comparing that to looking for a way to enjoy delicious taco recipes without sacrificing your health goals. I mean, it is better. If you want to write manually like we did in the old days, you know, back in 2022, well, you can go over here to the write section and actually just start writing content and it'll do some analysis of the keywords to make sure you've added them to the content. I don't really see how useful this is. I would definitely pick up a code of Neuron Writer before I wrote articles right here inside of Topic Mojo, especially considering there's not a save button. So I don't know if it's gonna save automatically, but that would give me a little bit of worry if I got too deep into the article uh, that maybe I'd close the tab accidentally or something. What you could do is paste in your article here, then enter in your keyword, and it will tell you the frequency at, with which it's used, but you could also just do, you know, command or control F and, you know, search for your keyword too. So to me, the coolest parts of this application are definitely the topic model as well as the question section. Now you could probably just use an AI chatbot, something like Claude or ChatGBT plus to actually get very similar results but it wouldn't be based on data coming from sources like Google or Twitter. Uh, that would be, well, not Twitter, right? Google or LinkedIn that are actually fairly modern and updated. It would be dated in the past and you'd never really know exactly what the source is. So yeah, 500 topic model queries per month and then 500 question finder queries per month. I feel like that's a pretty good value for a one-time cost of $59 if you need this type of tool but I don't think everyone needs to run out and grab it. If you're creating content and you don't have a shortage of ideas, like I don't really ever struggle to look up for different topics to create content about, well, I could probably pass on a tool like this. However, if you're trying to churn out a lot of content for clients or you just struggle to come up with ideas to explain your own business, I could see some value here, but it's definitely not something everyone needs. The ideas that they give you would be much more powerful if we just had a little bit of a clue about how popular they were. Now, I understand they want people to subscribe to their SEO plan, and I do think it's reasonably priced, but the result of something like a search query, you know, for tacos, it just says it's at the top. What does that even mean? You know, I need some more data there to actually decide whether or not I want to create content around that subject. So there you have it. That is my opinion of Topic Mojo. Do you agree or disagree? Definitely leave me a comment down below and let me know. Now I'm gonna give you my final score in a moment, but once again, I wanna remind you that AppSumo's Black Friday is ending very, very soon. People are going to regret this and wonder why they can get the 10% off. It happens every single year, so do not wait. Go ahead and click the link in the description and make your final Black Friday purchases. I wish this was better. Like, I, I really like the concept. There was another lifetime deal not that long ago, actually it was fairly long ago. I believe it was called Social Animal? Social Animal. Yes, RIP Social Animal. This tool, I think I originally reviewed in 2019 and they just went under back in 2023. Kind of a similar premise where you can get ideas for content. It gave you a little bit more info than Topic Mojo. I was hoping Topic Mojo would be a good replacement for folks who had purchased Social Animal and needed something to fill in its shoes. But unfortunately, we're looking at kind of a half-baked version of a tool right now. I'm gonna go ahead and give Topic Mojo a 5-1. That's gonna do it for this video. If you've got any questions about the tool, leave me a link down below. If you're a longtime user of Topic Mojo, is there anything I'm missing? Am I getting things wrong? Definitely let me know about that as well. My name is Dave. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.